Tarzan and the Diamond of Asher. While in camp near Tuinbaka, the Mountain of Sunrise, Tarzan and his friends are captured by a band of Hesiherians and proceed toward the forbidden city of Asher under their escort. Arriving at the foot of Tuinbaka, Hakeru, the leader of the Hesiherians, is rescued from the coils of a huge prehistoric python by Tarzan. In the Sanut, or car, which is to convey the party over the volcano's rim and down into Asher, the Hesiherians remove their skeleton masks. As the captives enter the city and approach the great pyramidal temple of Ma'a Chu, they hear voices raised in weird chant. As he listens, the blood drains from Hakeru's face. He turns to meet the cool, questioning gaze of Tarzan. What is it, Hakeru? The chant of death, O oh Tarzan. It is sung for thee and thy companions. He will be offered to Ma'a Chu at the beginning of the moon. But because my life is thine, I shall intercede for thee and thy friends with the Atef Suten. Come, follow me into the temple of Ma Chu. What is the matter with Wolf Tarzan? He stares into space as though watching something. Wolf. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, Tarzan. I, I, I am coming. Look, Atan, how those great doors open before us. Ah, it must be done by machinery, eh, Dano? Oui, Tom. You hear that dull, ratchet sound? No ten men could move those massive doors. Mm, it's been spooky in here. Those little blue lamps don't give much light, even if there been plenty of them. We are approaching another great door, Atan. I am... Hold ye here, strangers. Ye stand before the portal of the Chamber of Fifteen and the throne of the Atef Suten. Shenu heta shema tabu teisenechem. Ah, Atef. Strangers from the outer world await thy pleasure, O Atef. You hear, Tom? He repeats in English what he says in his own tongue. He been talking to someone behind that door. Steady, all of you. This is no worse than Opar, Darno. Enter the chamber of the Council of Thirteen, O Tarzan and the others. As the ponderous bronze barrier slowly opens, the little party led by Hakeru crosses the threshold. Before them spreads a vast chamber, illuminated by countless small golden lamps giving out a blue, eerie light. A forest of mighty stone columns support a high, deeply shadowed ceiling. In the center of this immense chamber, at the edge of a deep pit, a large casket of white marble rests upon the stone floor. Beyond the great pit is a great black marble altar, supporting upon its top a glittering copper knife. On a raised platform against the far wall, and reclining upon a hide-backed stone seat, a man, tall, black-haired, handsome, watches the approach of Tarzan and his friends with sinister, unwinking eyes. Beside him sits a woman, cold, haughty, cruelly beautiful. At a sign from Hakeru, the ape man and his companions halt at the foot of the dais. Waki ka arik atan hakeru. Ka arik shemet waki a ate. Because this man who calls himself Tarzan of the Apes and these others speak only the language of Angloland, I address thee, O Suten, 
and thy queen Tira, daughter of the sun, in their tongue. Tis well, Hakeru. Whence come these strangers? What seek they here? Let him who is their leader speak. Speak, O Tarzan. We come from the jungles in search of friends whom we believe were held captive in our share. Ye come here for the same purpose that others have come. Ye covet Maachu, the father of diamonds. Keep your father of diamonds. You're not interested in it. So, ye think he shall be permitted to go hence from our share as ye came? Of course. Why not? Mayhap the council of 13 hath other plans for ye. If Brian Gregory and his sister Alan are not here... And we'll go back to our own country. Sutan Atep of the Hesir alone commands in our share. If it be decreed that ye return to the outer world, so ye shall. Take them away. They are to be treated as prisoners, O Sutan? <laughs> Say rather as our guests. Go away with them. Thy word, O Sutan, is law. Come, O Tarzan. Lead on, Hakeru. We'll follow. Well, Lieutenant, we've been in a bad fix this time. Things don't look so good, eh? But we are still alive and together. Yes, yes. But for how long? Thank heaven, we are almost out of this terrible place. Did you see the eyes of that woman, Atan? They made my blood run cold. In that chamber across the corridor, ye shall await the decree of Sutan and his council. I shall intercede for thee and thy friends, O Tarzan. I am not worrying about that. I'm thinking of our lost friends. I cannot help thee with them. But uh, here is thy chamber. Enter. I shall run soon and bring ye word from the council. Peace to thee, O Tarzan. Eh bien, at least we have not been separated. Nor have our weapons been taken from us. For a prison, this ain't so bad. So bad. Those stone benches around the walls been covered with soft-looking skins at first. And I suggest that we all lie down and rest while we can. Are you not worried, Tarzan? Worried? What about? About what will happen to us. It isn't time to worry, Margaret. They'll have to take us out of here sometime. When they do, we'll make a run for it. Wolf, you are still willing to share with me in the Father of Diamonds? That's what I'm here for. There is it. You saw the white casket beside the pit in there? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you what else could be in such a casket? It is their ceremonial chamber, that great hall. It must be in there. The casket is the logical place for it. And how do you propose to get out of here and into that big hall? Leave that to me. I shall open the doors. Now lie down, but do not go to sleep. Don't know better. How do you know? Never mind how I know. By opening this door, we'll probably waking the others. We must be outside with the door closed before they can follow. And what are we waiting for? Look, Magra, Tano, and Larsen are dead to the world already. Why not get it over with? Tarzan? Hmm. He may be asleep, but not soundly enough. And what about those apes Hakeru told us about? You know, the guardian apes. Do we mix with them? It is the chance we must take if we expect to get the diamond. They are probably kept in the pit beside the casket. We must stay clear of it. Well, let's get started, then. If you know how to open the doors, we are wasting time. I think we can now. No weapons other than our pistols. Rifles will be in the way. Come. Cautiously, the two men leave their couches. They advance quickly, silently to the bronze door. Holmes examines the granite blocks of the wall, presses lightly against one. The low clicking sound which accompanies the movement of these strange barriers is heard throughout the silent chamber. Larson grumbles in his slumber. Tom and Wolf stand tense, watching the apparently soundly sleeping ape man. As the heavy portal swings slowly open, they step quickly out into the dimly lit corridor. Tom presses another stone, and as the heavy barrier closes behind them with a soft metallic clang, Tarzan sits up, reaches over, and lays a hand lightly on Darno's shoulder. Uh, Shh. What? Quiet. Come with me. Oh, don't do, but I... No I, questions. I, no time now. Hurry. I am ready, but I do not see Tom or Wolf. You will in a moment. Stand away from the door. Not loud. Come on. They're ahead of us. Wait. There must be a stone out here to close. Ah, 
Here it is. But we are leaving Magra. They're all right. We'll be back before they wake up. Now hurry. We're following Tome and Wolf. Tome and Wolf? Tome must have known all the time how to open these doors. When they thought we were asleep, they went out. I watched Tome open the door. Now they're somewhere in the council room behind this big door. But what are you looking for? A wall stone, lighter in color than... Here it is. There they are. Yes, making, making for the, for the white, white casket. casket. Yes. Leave the door open. Now come here. Behind this pillar, it's close enough. Listen, Nicote, they are arguing. Now, boom, we have an understanding. We uh, split 50-50. A third, no more. Magra, you and I. Uh, that's better. Now, lift up the lid on that box. If the diamond is there, I get it. Mm, help me. It is heavy. Mm, together, then. Uh, now. Him! Uh. A disc of gold. But... There is the diamond. Get the disc. The diamond is in the center under that lid. Lay it on the floor and pry it open with your gun barrel. With the golden disc on the floor between his knees, Wolf pries impatiently at the slot-like opening in its center. Tome, contemplating the excited German's half-closed eyes, stands thoughtfully fingering the butt of the gun at his hip. With a low, insane <laughs> laugh, Wolf wrenches savagely at the disc. Abruptly, it flies open. Instantly, the vast chamber is flooded with an intense, blinding glare. The eyes of the four men are glued to the great glittering gem which lies embedded in the golden eye. Helpless beneath the sway of some superhuman power that holds them nerveless within its grip, they stand like graven images without power to speak or move. A huge, shaggy head appears above the rim of the pit behind the German. Small, red, wicked eyes glitter evilly in the white glare of the diamond. A torso, huge, long-armed, short-legged, and covered with thick red hair, clambers grotesquely over the rim of the pit. <laughs> Jabbering gutturally through thick, slavering lips, the monstrous ape reaches out a hairy arm and paw and grasps Wolf by the back of the neck. <laughs> 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 